migrating from chat to messaging in Zendesk. This video comes to help the community migrate from classic chat to messaging. It's the result of us being in the trenches, specifically my colleague Gabriel that I'm going to show up here. This is the most recent handful of nuggets of information that we got by transitioning again with another client. And of course, there's always some other thing that we didn't think about because every use case is different and every use case is unique. Now, why do you need to do this transition? Well, because classic chat is being deprecated. It's an older system from Zenas. They bought Zopim chat maybe like seven years ago as a standalone feature and they integrated it into their uh, into the system. But now they are bringing all that functionality into Zenas messaging, which is this new feature from Zenas. So steadily, the classic chat from Zopim will be deprecated and will be no longer used. It is no longer being upgraded by Zena. So yeah, the sooner you make the transition, the better. First part is before you migrate to messaging, don't do anything. Focus on this. Number one is preparation, where you look into closing any of the active chats, then you address any pending chat tickets. So you have any tickets that have not been solved, cater to your customers, try to solve them on the spot. If you cannot, then maybe let the customer know that you can continue the conversation via email until you solve their request. Then you take your agents offline temporarily. And the most important bits on making this transition is going to be planned to do it during off peak hours, meaning that whenever you have the least amount of traffic coming over to you asking for support, that's when you make this transition. This to minimize the impact of this potential fuck ups, you know, that happens. There's always some small setup and there's always some small tweak you need. Better do it during off peak hours. Next thing you do, you enable messaging and it's going to be from here. So you go to admin center in here in the search bar on the left, you type messaging and you go to manage settings. And then you have this checkbox here, it would turn on messaging for your account. It is turned on for us because we've been using it for a while. All you do is you activate this and then you choose which brands you want this to be active in. That's the most important bit. And what this means is like any brand that you have will have messaging activated and everything will come as a support ticket within the support interface. So you will no longer be able to offer support in classic chat. And then you have some advanced settings like capacity release, uh, and then you have uh, ending sessions and then you have uh, email identities and then you have conversation control. However, I will not focus on these right now because the purpose of the video is something else. And you have another video on setting up messaging and setting up omnichannel and uh, all that beautiful stuff. So yeah, one thing leads to another and I don't want this to skew too far from these best practice tips that uh, we've compiled. The next thing is you update chat settings. So what you do is you organize agents and you group them by specific channels such as messaging of course now this requires for you to do a bit of internal planning like who will be offering support in these messaging channels which are in a sense live support because think about it uh, in messaging you have chats you have social media you have bots as well so you need to make sure for example who is going to be in the trenches for chat support because that needs to happen like in a fast pace uh, social media needs to be you know, every 30 minutes every 20 minutes every hour depends on you and your traffic but it's not necessarily super fast as a chat and then bots okay who's going to handle bot flows and who's going to fix those who's going to take over different flows from the bots uh, and escalation so you need to figure that out beforehand if you need help of course you can talk to us. By the way, my name is Dominic. I'm a customer experience enthusiast. I've been one for the past 15 plus years, 11 years in this consultant. Consider subscribing to this YouTube channel if you get any value. Thank you so much for watching. The next thing you do, you set up triggers. You route messaging tickets to appropriate agent groups and you can use omnichannel routing for that. And you can find a link to how to set up omnichannel routing in the description of this video. You need to configure the chat limits. By this, I mean to use the chat dashboards to control the number of active messaging conversations an agent can handle. So essentially this is capacity, set up capacity for your agents to make sure that uh, based on their experience and based on their skills, they can take on a larger number of tickets or a lower number of tickets. This is up to you to decide. An obvious next step is to train your agents. If they don't know how to use messaging and they're not familiar with the interface, they have to get a training and uh, you can find pretty good ones online and uh, for free as well. By the way, if you enjoy the content, I'd be really grateful if you subscribe to this YouTube channel and you let me know what you think in the comments and I will get back to you. I'd be really grateful and thank you so much.
Okay, now after the migration tips. As this becomes functional immediately once you enable it, you can consider doing the following things in order to make sure that everything runs smoothly. First thing you do is you create an out of office message to manage customer expectations. So if you're outside of business hours, there has to be a schedule in place and the greeting, which according to the schedule will say, uh, we're actually not in today or we're you know outside of business hours and we'll be back at X time. You can also encourage your customers to continue the conversation via email. So if they, you know, they don't get the live support they want at that moment, here's an email address that you can send us an email to and we'll attend to it first thing when we get into the office. Enable the customer satisfaction in messaging. So as you know in Zendesk, or if you don't, there's uh, one classic way of measuring customer satisfaction with a, either a positive or a negative. Now there's an addition and upgrades and you can measure customer satisfaction from one to three, one to five, or one to seven. And you can put emojis to make it look nice. And you can actually ask follow up questions, which is amazing. And now you can actually have the same experience for messaging as well. And this is in itself a different automation, or actually this is a trigger, which you need to enable in customer satisfaction. If you go in here, customer satisfaction, you just go here in objects and rules and you have customer satisfaction and you have two business rules that enable enable you to measure satisfaction. One is the email and which is an automation and then there's messaging and this uses a trigger. So you just need to come in here to activate these or you just look at them how they look like or you find them in triggers or in automations and you tweak them to make them look however you want. And the prerequisite of course which I recommend you to go here in edit survey. There's also a video on how to set up customer satisfaction which you can also find in the description of this video. One thing leads to another <laughs> And this is another lesson. And the last thing that ensures a smooth transition is going to be for you to monitor how this is going. And you can do that from the live dashboard in Zenesk Explore. So actually, let me go there. And if you can see my screen, I go here and explore. So in here in explore, I in the search bar here, I put live. And the one that I like the most is this one, live performance by channel. And as you can see, I, I can see how many support agents I have and how many agents are offline. And then I can go for messaging and I can see the same thing and it's great because I can also drill in here and I can see who is online and who isn't. Currently nobody's online because this is a uh, testing environment. But if I go here and I put myself online and then I go back and of course I refresh my screen. Actually, I didn't need to do that. Here I am live one agent and then it's me. It's online. This is great for you to see how many people are online and who's actually working and who's not. And it's a great feature for you as a manager to keep an eye out on things and keep people accountable. Okay, so this has been the quick update. Thank you for watching. I hope this was useful for you. And uh, the more we learn, the more we come here and share this information with you. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one and bye-bye.